Hi, I'm Ashley Weston. I'm a celebrity menswear stylist. This video is part of my men's essential accessory series. To see the other other elf. <laughs> To see the other articles and videos in this series, check out the link in the video description. So today is a very special day because this is the last video in my men's essential accessory series. And on top of that, this is probably the most requested video I've gotten since putting out videos. Today, I'm gonna talk to you all about watches. Watches are one of the few pieces of jewelry that a man can wear that is universally acceptable. Other jewelry like rings, earrings, necklaces, bracelets are all going to have their detractors, myself included. So for that reason alone, you should definitely own a watch. And also from a practical perspective, a watch is really great to, for telling the date and time. Although that's not really a selling point anymore since we all carry smartphones, but still very handy. Just like I discussed way, way back in the intro to this series, there's something amazing about owning a finely crafted piece of history and engineering perfection. So whether you're a watch guy or not, any self-respecting man should own a watch or two. Since the beginning of this series, well actually way, way before this series, I've been asked the same couple of questions regarding watches, so let's just get those out of the way before I get into the watches you should own. First, what type of watch should you wear with your outfit? So this is really simple. It basically breaks down into two categories. The first is if you're wearing a suit, then you should definitely wear a dress watch. So that's a dress watch with a leather or other hide strap. Never, 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 please never wear a sport watch with a suit so that's a diving or chronograph sport watch that's with a metal band like I have here it drives me insane when I see a man wearing a suit with a sport watch it's just reeks of an amateur if you're wearing a suit make sure to wear a dress watch if you're wearing a business casual or casual outfit then I highly recommend going with a sport watch with either a metal band or switching out the strap for materials like rubber or leather whatever you like so there's there's definitely some scenarios where you can wear your dress watch. It's just going to be dependent on how dressy your casual outfit is. So if you're wearing a nice fitted black t-shirt with your dark wash jeans, then a dress watch is perfectly acceptable. But if you're wearing like flip flops and shorts, then that's going to look really out of place. And that's where you should definitely wear a sport watch for sure. The second question I get asked a lot is how do I match my watch to my outfit? All you have to do is remember if you're wearing a suit with black dress shoes and a black belt, then go with a dress watch with a black strap. If you're wearing a suit with brown dress shoes and a brown belt, then you want to go with a dress watch with a brown strap. And if you're wearing anything outside of a suit, even if you're wearing dress shoes, you can pretty much wear whatever watch you'd like. There's only a couple things you gotta remember though. If you're wearing, say, you know, boots or dress shoes and you wanna wear your dress watch, just make sure the strap matches the color of your shoes. If you're gonna wear a metal braceleted sport watch, then obviously it doesn't matter. So the third and final question I get asked all the time is, how many watches should I own? Typically, you want to own two to three watches. I mean, you can certainly get away with owning one watch, which I'll get into in a minute. If you have two to three different types of watches, that will get you through every possible situation you find yourself in. So let's get into the watches you should own. So if there's one watch that every man needs to have, then it is a dress watch with a black leather strap, a silver case with a white dial. This watch will get you through the majority majority of the scenarios you'll find yourself in. If you're only going to have one watch, make sure to grab a brown leather strap as well so that you could swap out this strap for the brown one if you're wearing brown dress shoes or brown boots. Definitely recommend checking out my article because I have a link in there that will take you to a site that sells the most amazing high quality straps for a really nice price point. So let me get into the reasons why I'm recommending this type of watch with these very specific features. The reason why I recommend silver is because it'll match all of the hardware in your outfit. So your the belt buckle, cuff links, tie bar, the silver will match it perfectly. If you go with gold or a black case, it's just not gonna match as many outfits as a silver case would. Now, in terms of the size of the case, so I'm a little new school in the sense that I don't mind a slightly thicker case like this IWC that I have here. For the most part, you wanna keep it as thin as possible and you want it to actually just complement your wrist size. So if you have a average to smaller wrist 
wrist, then I always recommend going with a sub 40 millimeter. So usually between a 38 to 40 millimeter case. But if you have a wider wrist, you can go above a 40 to like a 42 or a 44 millimeter. As for the white dial, I recommend white because it'll go with any outfit that you could possibly throw at it. If you go with a black, navy, gray, or skeleton dial, it just can tend to look sporty or gaudy, but I mean, you can certainly have those colors. Just, those are secondary watches, which can look great, but they're very specific. So only get those after you get a watch with a white dial. Now with the black leather strap, you can also go with other leather alternatives like ostrich, alligator, whatever you want, but just make sure you don't go with a rubber or NATO strap because remember your dress watch, you generally wear that with a suit and it just looks so when you're wearing a really casual strap with your suit. A lot of style bloggers definitely wear colorful watch straps with their suits and I just think that for their photos, it's fine, it looks fine, but in real life, when people are looking at you, it's just gonna look so very amateur. So please avoid that. That's why you want a black strap and also a brown strap if you're wearing brown dress shoes. And one last note about your strap. I really dislike contrasting stitching just like I do in my wallets. Get a strap that has the stitching, the color of the stitching matching the color of your strap. You can certainly have those later down the road, but you just don't start there. As for subdials and complications, I'm pretty new school in that I don't think a dress watch needs to have the cleanest dial like this one. I think that a few complications is all right, but just keep it at two to three max. As for the second watch you should own, it's basically identical to the dress watch with the black leather strap, except now it'll have a brown strap and still though a silver case with a white dial. In this situation, you can actually get away with going with a gold case, but I still recommend going with silver. With your leather strap, just make sure again, you don't have contrasting stitching. Now we get to go over the exact dress watches you should own based on your budget. For dress watches with a black leather strap, there are a ton of options out there, ranging from $100,000 to $100. For high-end watches, I'm a huge fan of Alanga and Zuna, JLC, but definitely, Pound for pound, dollar for dollar, I absolutely love this IWC Portuguese Automatic. Everything about this watch to me is just done to perfection. It has a slightly larger case that really stands out and I love the red in the power reserve as well as the blue numbers and hands. If you haven't seen this watch in person, you absolutely need to. This comes in a brown leather strap version as well. All the watches I'll be talking about come in either a black and or brown leather strap version and if they don't sell that, then the manufacturer probably sells the brown and or black additional straps separately and if they don't, then you can actually visit my favorite strap site, which is linked in my article that sells awesome straps at a really great price point, so check that out. If the IWC is out of your price range, then definitely check out this Omega DeVille. I love this watch because it has a slightly smaller and thinner case. So if you have a smaller wrist, this watch is really great for you. Now this watch comes in a couple different versions and sizes, so check out my article linked in the video description. Next up, I've got these two watches by Nomos. I've got their Metro Neomatic and their Classic Tangenta. These are very good watches for the price point. The movement is absolutely fantastic and they're really unique looking, but classic at the same time. Next up, I've got these watches by Young Hans. So this one here is the Max Bill Chronoscope. And I have this one here that is the Max Bill Automatic. These have a great simple design, but they still look really unique as well. For a great budget friendly watch and one that comes with a brown leather strap, I have this Tissot Visodate. This hits all the points that we've been talking about. And I really love the dark brown leather strap. Next up, I have something similar to the Tissot. It's the Orient Bambino and it's even more budget friendly. And lastly, I have this watch by Mundane. I really like this because it's super unique, but I still think it's 
perfectly acceptable as a dress watch. So if you're really looking for something a little outside of the norm, this is a really great watch and it comes in a variety of sizes. Without making this video 10 hours long, I decided to just showcase these, but I definitely have other recommendations, which you can find in my article, which is linked in the video description. The third and final watch you should own is a sport watch, but more specifically a chronograph or a diving watch. So before we go into the exact watch you should own, I wanna go into the details you should definitely look for in a sport watch. Your sport watch should have the following features. So for the dial, you want to have a navy or black dial. I'd give more preference towards a blue dial just because it goes with a lot more outfits, but just make sure it's more of a navy color like this Omega Speedmaster and less like a brighter blue, which you'll find on the 18 karat gold Rolex Submariner. So I prefer those colors over white because white just looks really odd with a sport watch. It's just a little too dressy. So definitely go with a black or navy. Like I said before, in terms of case size, you want to make sure to take your wrist size into consideration. So if you have smaller wrists, then definitely go with something that's between 38 to 40 millimeters. So I have this one here, it's technically a 41, but I think that it wears much smaller than it actually is. So 41 is close enough to 40 where it will suit a smaller wrist quite nicely. Now, if you have an average to larger wrist size, definitely go with something between a 40 to 44 millimeters. So I have this one here that is a 44 millimeter. I'm just gonna do it a little side by side so that you can see the difference. So for your sport watch, there's nothing better for a casual outfit than a nice metal bracelet. Just make sure that it is titanium, <laughs> or stainless steel. Now you don't wanna go with gold or black. It just looks really cheesy and it's not gonna go with all your casual outfits as nicely as a silver bracelet. The beauty of a sport watch and why I really love it is that you can actually switch out the bracelet for a strap that's made out of leather, rubber, purlon. You can really have fun with it and it's gonna look fantastic with your outfits, especially just when you're feeling a little bored with this watch. You can really do some exciting new things with it by changing out the strap. So the last point I wanna make about sport watches is please, whatever you do, do not wear this with a suit. Suit equals a dress watch. This is a sport watch, which equals casual outfits. Anything from a blazer down, wear a sport watch. With a suit, you gotta wear a dress watch. Now we can get into the exact sport watches you should own. First up, I've got this Omega Speedmaster. It's in titanium, which is a special edition, and it has this beautiful navy color to it. I don't care if you are a watch guy or an aspiring watch guy, this is the ultimate chronograph. So I know there's some people out there that are probably watching this video saying that the Rolex Daytona is the best chronograph out there. I 100% disagree with you. This is the best chronograph out there. This watch has been to the moon, literally has been to the moon. A couple of other chronos that I definitely recommend, which you can find in my article, but for a great budget-friendly chrono, I cannot recommend enough this Tissot watch. It is fantastic. For the price point, it is such a great quality watch. So if you're looking for a watch that's a hybrid between a chrono and a diving watch, then I have this one here by Hamilton, which is really quite unique. I haven't seen a watch quite like this that kind of has features of both styles. So the other type of sport watch you should consider is a diver's watch. And to start talking about any other watch besides the Rolex Submariner would be a huge mistake. If you don't know anything about this watch, it's simply a classic and any self-respecting man would have this or a similar looking heritage watch in his collection. So I've got this one here by Hamilton. It's actually kind of a sleeker, more modern take on a diving watch. It's not so utilitarian looking. It's a navy dial that I really love and it's just like, it's really beautiful and just very clean looking. It's a great design and a great price point as well. For a great budget friendly option that's more traditional traditional in style, I've got this one here by Orient. It's a great heritage watch in the vein of the Rolex Submariner, and it has a really nice black face, and really just for the price point, I'd highly consider this watch. For another great heritage style, but budget-friendly watch, you gotta consider Seiko. So there you have it. These 
These are the best dress and sport watches that I think you should definitely own. Be sure to check out my website for an in-depth article because I didn't want to make this video again an hour long. So I definitely have a lot more recommendations that I put in the article at every price point. Do me a favor, please. I'd love for you to leave a comment below telling me about the watch or watches that you think every man should own. I'm just really curious and I'd love to hear your opinion. All right, so this is the end of the essential accessories series. We're finished with it. This was the last video. I hope you enjoyed the series. And if you know nothing about it, I'm going to leave a couple links in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, remember, give it a thumbs up. Okay, I'm done. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next series.